YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark and this is your Friday E video and uh, I'm going to take you along for a little bit of uh, maintenance. Uh, I come up here at least uh, once a week or so and I look over the mill and every once in a while I find something. Well ever since I put this mill back together this master dog has been a problem. It comes loose all the time and I cannot find a three-quarter inch um, self-locking nut. So I think I found a problem. I think I'm going to put a, this might be, this might fix it. I don't know. We're going to put a uh, lock washer between the two jam nuts. And I don't know. Got to try something because this thing, as tight as I can get these two together, it always comes loose. And uh, I thought about drilling it and pinning it and thought about a lot of things. But I said, why not try this? So don't try this at home. I think honestly, this, this will uh, probably stop the problem. And what's nice about having the sawmill videos is when I'm editing the film, I'll notice things that are wrong. Then I go and address them. So. I think honestly, we have got her. I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit more on the master dog itself. Don't wanna get it too tight, but you don't want it in there too sloppy. I think that's, yeah, still got a little bit of wiggle. Let's give that just a, a little bit more. All right, we'll check it in a we'll check in a week or so. Um, other thing I look for, see where you're looking at here. Uh, I check the dogs pretty often. Uh, a lot of people have asked, what's the lower dog for? That stuff rolling around here. What's the lower dog for, and why is there two upper dogs? Reason being, and I'll give you a little demo. The bottom dog, literally, when you're biting into something, is that hydraulic cylinder squeezes, it grabs it from the bottom and the top. So it's like a set of tongs. So uh, one thing on hydraulic dogs, uh, you see John Clark on Frickin' Jeep, his are just a manual set dogs. There's a spring-loaded lower dog. So you always want to, and this is just WD-40, I always just give these slides a good drinking and anywhere there's pivot points and it just works off of a big heavy spring and besides lubrication there is a let me get you off the stand here and here's a real important thing back here to, sh to show you basically what holds that dog into place is this bolt right here if that bolt comes loose and it has a lock underneath, it's a set screw. No, it's on top. Okay. Some of these are on top. Some of these are on bottom. You see that little cap screw? That thing right there keeps this from spinning out. Otherwise, if this dog would come out during sawing, you would see the 4th of July for sure. So just checking things. Uh, looks like I have... Nope, all the cotter keys are in place. You want to make sure there's stuff not vibrating out. And um, same thing on the taper. It's got that little hairpin in there. Make sure everything's in there because if this rattles out, which you would have a hard time. Right there we go. We got the master dog problem fixed. Uh, the other thing we're going to work on today, and um, I'll just take you, take you along for the walk here. Um, about every three or four times a year, I go ahead and I oil up the chains on the log deck. And sorry about that. So all I do is we'll do this last, but I fire up the bus motor. This is the used oil from the bus motor and you just turn it on, let it run. I, I lock the pedal in the cab so it keeps spinning. And you just let this thing go around. It takes a long time because this, these are 16 foot long. So you're talking 
oh probably the better part of 40 foot of chain by the time it makes its loop and stuff around the other thing that we're going to adjust today and hopefully fix let's see here if i can get you in here i'm gonna sure try my best all right here we are we are over here with chewy and the problem going on here right now is the drive chain is just a little bit loose and when i watch the videos i see this stuff so um i'm gonna go ahead and try to get that problem worked out so let's go ahead and get the thing fired up and uh in fact i'll just take you along up in the cab before we put the sawing we are going to have some sawing video on for you but you can see when you're by yourself everything takes a couple minutes to do there it is the old starter up and in order to have hydraulics we do need to put it in pto Okay, some people have asked about the hydraulics how does this work and while the blade is spinning okay now it's safe to get to it this is the hydraulic system on the mill these are two pumps they're stacked together and on the inside back there there's a six shiv wheel b belt that goes over behind there i'll show you on the other side to the pulley uh, I had put a flow diverter in years ago and this controls the carriage because it gave it so much um, oil that it was everything was just erratic it was very hard to control so I slowed it down to where I'm comfortable with it and uh, but that's basically what runs it in the v-belts go back to the old bus motor and there she is the old 671 Detroit so basically, when I had rebuilt this thing, I went ahead and made it so it's semi easy to get to. So I got the right side. That bugger is tight. We start loosen this just a little bit. Yeah. Probably a deep well socket, but I don't think that would get in there neither. Just try to spin it up a little bit. I don't know if I got it loose enough, but anyhow, this guy here. side here a little bit if 
but you just keep working it. You don't want to get it too tight. That's a lot better than it was. A little bit of slop in there, but anyhow, you get the gist of it. You got to keep adjusting stuff. You want to check all your pins. You want to make sure nothing's coming loose. Check your houses for wear, leaks. You want to just take a good look at everything. Make sure that nothing's binding. And it's looking good. So, all right, enough of that. Okay. Okay, I'll let you go here for a couple minutes say and I got everything adjusted correctly. So that is very little slop You got to have some in there. So it's all oiled up It's adjusted All the chains are oiled Oiled the drive chain um, So but this is what you do. You got to come up once in a while um, Sorry if I bored you a little bit, but I do have a sawing video next uh, Eddie had telephone poles that look just like that and we cut the two ends off and made six by sixes for them so uh, I don't know how many logs are on there but uh, we're gonna do some pole sawing for you so you get to see that so hope you enjoy your Friday e video and uh, I will be doing another live chat getting closer to the Bunyan show um, it is it's creeping up on us here pretty fast so uh, Hope you enjoyed this uh, little sawmill maintenance and uh, I will see you on Saturday with the Eddie Horvath and hopefully ZZ Mark. So everybody take care and thanks again. Bye-bye. Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel and we are going to saw something different. We're gonna square up some telephone poles that have already been canted to six inches. Eddie's doing a bridge repair job. So let's go ahead and get everything fired up here. And I don't know how they're going to load onto the carriage, actually. It'll be interesting. So, let's see how it works here. I'm going to try to fling them with the stop and load to get the carriage back here first. Yes. Yeah. 
And we're just gonna just take them down to six inches. And these were already these were already scanned a long time ago. down to it but it didn't go nowhere all right just a silly little video here
can see the holes where we pulled stuff out.
one. Let's clean this up. That bottom is raggedy. All right. So good, Eddie. All right, putting everything away here. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, some different, but what we're doing is what we film, so we don't just uh, throw logs on and just film. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please share. Please like. All of the above. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.